The left pits people against each other. Divide and conquer is the strategy. I don't want to live in that world. It is the exact opposite of e pluribus unum. He said you were racist. He said you were very racist. He said you were very racist. He said he was racist. He's coming to light. He said you really are. It's coming to light. He said you really are. Hey, hey, I'm just answer one question. Yes or no? What's your answer? What about the fake person? Yes or no? And what the left has stood for with political correctness is to try and get those with whom they disagree to shut up. And the, the Tea Party movement, and Sarah Palin, and Michelle Bachman, and Alan West, and and all the all the people that have gone out there against the mainstream media and said, "You're going to call us racist. You're going to call us potential Timothy McVeigh's." Fuck you. I understand the language, and you're implying that I'm racist. Okay. And that is what you are, that is going to be the sum total of your education as you go out there and you're not going to be able to make anything. And that's why I graduated with my American Studies degree. The ability to judge other Americans as not being sufficiently tolerant because they didn't agree with the left's definition of tolerance. And I'm telling you this is that you need to understand what multiculturalism is and what political correctness is. And it is, it is cultural Marxism. And it is the translation of Marxist theory from instead of the haves versus the have-nots. It didn't work in this country. So they created the oppressor versus the oppressed. And so they pitted people in the name of diversity where they pit Hispanics against each other. Do you know what La Raza is? Do you know what the Reconquistador movement is? It is a racist movement in this country. What about the New Black Panthers who are supported? They're racist. And, they're, and, and the definition of racism is only white people can be racist because black and Hispanics can't be. It, that is malarkey. They have you thinking in terms of race. Uh, they have you thinking in terms of race. Everything is race. There was a world before this that was created. The buildings that were made here were made by people who didn't graduate their colleges obsessed with race. They learned, they learned through math. They learned through science how to improve. I'm answering. You had your statement. You had your statement, and I am answering it. You do not interrupt me. This educational system is going to fail you. You will not be able to invent a widget, and you certainly won't be able to build it in this country anymore. They have ruined. I am the ultimate example. I graduated from college believing exactly as you believe, and I walked in, in from the theoretical world into the real world and realized if I wanted to put rice on the table and pay for my rent, I better get out of this victimhood mentality, and I did. What's your take on the university system? A lot, a lot of conservatives have been garbage. The American research institutions in this country are the best in the land. The engineering departments, the science departments, but the humanities departments in our lifetime have been turned to shit. And these kids I feel sorry for here who are sitting around with their gender studies degrees and $200,000 in debt crying that this system failed them, and they did. They won't be they won't be able to afford their first down payment on a house until they're 45 years old, but they'll be able to, to quote Maya Angelou. Opposite of grassroots, which is what this is. And what happened, and what happened? As their organizer said, get away from him. He's trying to provoke you. One person against 350, and they started to walk away. And as they started to walk away, one lady says, as they're chanting, stop the hate. She says, 
I think he's gay! <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is fun. I love the SCIU. I love the organized left because they're not individuals. We have to start confronting them. It's not just the SCIU, it's the mainstream media. They're just as predictable, and we are exposing them every step of the way. I said, hey! I'm at an anti-hate rally and you just called me gay. That's lovely. Why did you call me gay? And other guy says, because of the way you talk. I go, we've got another winner. And people uh, uh, of all sorts, including my fellow Jews and even white males who offend me with their every act. I see things through the prism of race and sex and religion and I'm enraged and I need to go take on Everyone, especially the Caucasian white male. Oh, okay. And where are you going to do that? Wherever I find them. There's an, there's an outrageous man driving a vehicle. I am going to confront him. Okay. I get it. Uh, no. It's so not centrally organized that it could hurl accusations at it and there would be no central organizing force that could defend against the accusations that it was racist or sexist or homophobic, which is an absurd accusation to hurl at 10 million people who are simply saying that they want an accountable government uh, and they want limited government and they want uh, a government that spends money wisely and doesn't overspend money and lives within its means. It's an absurd thing. But Omar said something profoundly stupid uh, that he thought that the these guys were heroic, that they, they showed extreme bravery to fly into the World Trade Center. I understand what he meant, though, that they, they were willing to sacrifice their lives. But it was, it, all it is, don't get so offended, it's, it's cynicism. That's all that, he is the sum of his cynicism. He just wants to say the most offensive thing because he knows that it's going to get a bark from the seals in the audience. That's all it was and two Houston DJs started to act like the provost at your local uh, you know, liberal arts college and said, let's get this guy off the air. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> Our narrative is that we're pro-freedom of speech. We're, you know, you know, and I went out there and I reached out to pray your hand to everyone. I said, oh my God, we have to stand by this guy on principle, okay? And they did. All of them said, hey, wait a sec, stop going after him, let this exist, because we have to abide by this type of retribution every single day when we defend our basic American Judeo-Christian, you know, democratic, limited government, constitutional principles. Where they kick you in the nuts until you barf up your own bowels, and you go, fine, I'm a patriarchal, racist, anti-gay, just do whatever you want to me. <laughs> That is why we have a nation of eunuchs. <laughs> of men that are afraid of being pilloried by Tom Brokaw and, and Peter Jennings and Dan Rather. That they know that if they don't accept the social justice, liberal, they change it every week, progressive, <laughs> Because nobody believed, because they don't believe in free speech unless they're being kicked out of Zuccotti Park. Propagandist and a Tea Party loyalist. His new book is called Righteous Indignation, Excuse Me While I Save the World. Not a very modest title. In the book, you will find scarcely a word about one of his most infamous episodes involving Shirley Sherrod, the former USDA official fired after a video of her was posted on a Breitbart website. Sherrod is now suing Breitbart for accusing her of racism after showing, quote, a deceptively edited clip. And I'm delighted to say that Andrew Breitbart joins us now. Good afternoon, sir. Well, I don't accept the premise. But let me move forward. In your book, which I've read, mm -hmm. you write, I'm not religious, and I'm certainly no theologian, but if there's one thing in religion that speaks to me, it is the idea of absolute truth. Mm -hmm. We start by uncovering the truth and telling everyone about it. Mm -hmm. So that's your, those are your words. Absolutely. So you know what you're protesting? How much are you getting paid? You will be the last to find out you've been due. Enjoy yourself. You don't even know why you're here. 
You don't understand why you're here. You don't understand why you're here. How much are you getting paid? We know very well. How much are you getting paid? We're not getting paid. We're not paying anybody. Nobody's getting paid. We are here. Are you here to stop the hate? Yes. I, are you a hateful man? No I'm certainly not. You're hateful. I'm a peaceful man. What are you here no for? I am here to no stop the hate, hate that Glenn no Beck is promulgating. Like in what? This one thing that he said that's hateful. No one thing. One thing. No one. No one thing that he said that's hateful. No one. No one. Not a hundred. No one. No one. No one. One. I'm not going to fall into your trap. No one. It's a trap. No Truth hate. is a trap. No he, he should not be allowed to take that from us. Why is he a coward? Why is he a Why is he a coward? Why is he a coward? Why is he a coward? Because Your you sign says back is a coward. Why is he a coward? Because he, Why is he a coward? He stands there on, on his... I'm his, asking him. That's what he says. He stands on, in, his, in his, his TV show. It just... You know what? Why is he a coward? Your sign has a very clear statement. Why? SEIU. Who here is from SEIU? Dave, do you remember when SEIU beat up Kenneth Gladney, the black man? How did you feel about that? How did you feel about that? That's hatred. That's hatred. That's hatred. Ma'am, are you homophobic? That's hatred. What is Beck lied about? I'm going to go sign by sign. What has he lied about? Name one lie. Probably everything. Probably everything. Good quote. There you go. Is there a single person here willing to back up what your sign has to say? Is there a single person? It's over. Right now, my Twitter feed is already calling me a big fat homosexual. Hello, children at home. No, your dad's not gay. That's how the left rolls. <laughs> Everybody asks me, why do you retweet? Hey, why do you do that? I can't tell you how many people I admire. And in fact, there's almost no one in the world who I respect more than Hugh Hewitt. And he took me aside the other day and he said, I don't think you should be doing that, Andrew. I don't think you should be doing that. Well, Professor Hewitt, on this issue, I disagree. Because they've held over our heads with contempt the false narrative of their innate tolerance. The least tolerant people you will ever meet in your entire lives, I know it, I live it every single day, and I retweet it to remind them that I know exactly who they are. Farmer dressed and in a family of apes. Are you asking me about this? What do I have to do with it? I want it? to ask you, what do you think of that? Image? It's deplorable. It's, it's deplorable, it's reprehensible, and you're trying to create, when, you're trying to insinuate that I'm a racist here, which is what MSNBC does to conservatives every single day. This entire context of this conversation is what the NAACP and what the Democratic Party has been doing to Andrew, the I Tea Party for I the last spoken, year. I haven't spoken to anyone. And the entire why context didn't you, of this, the why subtext didn't you, of this Andrew, interview. Tell me three things. The first was, don't trust the media narrative. I, I had the privilege of knowing you for a long time, and from the very beginning, it was very clear. The media narrative was always false. You could count on it. No matter what the media said, it was going to be wrong, and it was our job not to accept that narrative. That was point number one. Point number two was walk toward the fire. He was very clear on this. You have to walk toward the fire. That's why he didn't care when people called him racist. It bothered him, but he didn't deep down knew it was false, so he didn't really care about it. And when Republicans, conservatives, libertarians, when people who think for themselves are intimidated by the left and by the media, that is a loss in and of itself. We can't be intimidated, and that's something that Andrew proved to us. If you had been intimidated, Acorn would still be operational, and Anthony Weiner would still be tweeting pictures of his junk to random people from his seat in Congress, not from his wife's closet where he's probably locked right now. <laughs> Third point, and this was, this was truly Andrew, and I don't, think, I don't know anybody else who did this, and that was you have to have fun doing it. Everybody takes this stuff way too seriously. Andrew took it seriously. He took it dead seriously. But, at the end of the day, he had fun being Andrew Breitbart. I don't know anyone else who went to an Occupy movement parade wearing rollerblades just to videotape it. I mean, a few days before he died, he was riding around, he saw a homeless man with an Obama sign, he goes over and videotapes himself with a homeless man and the Obama sign. Because it was funny and because it was fun. And that's who Andrew was. Okay. And... 
that is what you are, that is going to be the sum total of your education as you go out there and you're not going to be able to make anything. And that's what I graduated with my American Studies degree. The ability to judge other Americans as not being sufficiently tolerant because they didn't agree with the left's definition of tolerance. And I'm telling you this, is that you need to understand what multiculturalism is and what political correctness is. And it is... It is and what the left has stood for with political correctness is to try and get those with whom they disagree to shut up. And the, the Tea Party movement and Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman and Alan West and, and all, the, all the people that have gone out there against the mainstream media and said, you're going to call us racist, you're going to call us potential Timothy McVeigh's, fuck you. I understand the language and you're implying that I'm racist. The left pits people against each other. Divide and conquer is the strategy. I don't want to live in that world. It is the exact opposite of e pluribus unum. He said you were racist. He said you were very racist. He said he was 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 He said he was very racist. 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 He said he was very so they created the oppressor versus the oppressed. And so they pitted people in the name of diversity, where they pit Hispanics against each other. Do you know what La Raza is? Do you know what the Reconquistador movement is? It is a racist movement in this country. What about the Nubat Panthers, who are supported? They're racist. And, they're, and, and the definition of racism is, only white people can be racist because black and Hispanics can't be. Yeah, yeah. It, that is malarkey. Yeah. They have you thinking in terms no, of I, race. I uh, they have you thinking in terms of race. Everything is race. There was a world before this that was created. The buildings that were made here were made by people who didn't graduate their colleges obsessed with race. They learned, they learned through math. They learned through science how to improve.